So we have a question under projectile motion. The question is saying an airplane carrying out a parcel drop release a parcel while traveling at a state speed of 90 meters per second at an altitude of 200 meters. Calculate the part one, the time between the parcel leaving the airplane and it striking the ground, but two, calculate the horizontal distance traveled by the parcel before hitting the ground. So first we need to come up with a free body diagram. A free body diagram is going to help us to understand what we are supposed to do. Okay, so we have an airplane. Let's say that this is the airplane we should have. Now this airplane is moving in this direction. So the velocity which have been given, they are saying that uh, drops a parcel while traveling at a stayed speed. So this stayed speed meaning that this speed is in x direction. So we have the vx is equal to 90 meters per second. We don't have the vy. Now what is happening is that from the ground, let's say that this is the ground here. Okay, from the ground all the way to where the the airplane is, the distance or let's say the height is 200 meters. Okay, then as it is going in x direction, in this direction, what is happening is that the parcel is going to be dropped from here. So this parcel is going to move like a projectile. So to start from there, then it will be going like this until it reaches here. Okay, so we're going to have the horizontal distance. The moment you hear the horizontal distance under projectile motion, that is the range. So that is the range we should have. Okay, so if that is the range we should have, then now we can find the time. Now, when the parcel was dropping from the airplane here, what we have to understand is that in the VY, or the VY, the initial velocity here, it is zero. When something is falling freely, from the top of the building, the initial velocity at that particular point is uh, zero. So they want us to find the time. Okay. So we have three formulas which can help us to find the time. Or let me say the uh, three formulas which you need to understand under projectile motion. We have the v, Vy or the V final is equal to the V initial plus GT. We have this displacement which we can say the height is equal to the V initial times T plus half GT squared. We also have uh, the V final squared is going to be equal to the V initial squared plus two GS. S is the height in this case. But now we want to find the time, meaning that this formula can't work because we don't have time here. At the same time, we can't use this formula to find the time because we don't have the final velocity. Okay, now they want us to find the time between the parcel leaving the airplane and it striking the ground. So they want us, to, we can use the only formula which is going to be best for us to use is this, the second formula. Where we have the distance, the altitude is uh, 200 meters, that's how high it is. Then we have the initial velocity. Now this velocity, it is the velocity in y direction. The velocity in y direction when something is releasing from the top of the building, we know that the initial velocity there is going to be zero. So we have the initial velocity. This Vx we should have, the 90 meters per second, it is the velocity in x direction and not the velocity in y direction. So what we have to do is, the formula which we are going to use is the second formula, where we are going to say, the h instead of uh, uh, s, I'm going to use h. So I'm going to say that the h is going to be equal to the V initial times time plus half, gt squared. Now what you have to understand here is that we are talking about the velocity in y direction. So we can say that the h is going to be equal to the vy initial times t plus this. Now why are we saying that it is the vy? Because we are talking about it is moving in a straight line. Now we want to find the time. Okay. So the initial velocity, in short the velocity in y direction is zero. So we are going to say that this is going to be, this is going to be zero, we are going to have 
half gt squared. Our goal is to find the time. Now I can make t as a subject of formula. If you want, you can plug in the values direct. But I, I, in this case, I'm going to make t as a subject of formula, and it's going to be. I'm going to to do times two to remove the half to the right hand side. So I'm going to say that this is going to be 2h is going to be equal to g t squared. I will divide both sides by g, both sides by g. Therefore, this is going to be, uh, it's going to be the t squared is going to be equal to 2h over g. So we get the square root to both sides. We'll be able to see that t will be equal to the square root of 2h over g. But we have we have now everything. It's just a matter of us now plugging in the values and find the time. So we have t to be equal to 2. The h is 200. Then the g is 9.8. Okay. The g is positive because when the parcel was dropping, it was coming toward, or in short, it was going toward the gravity. So when when the object is going toward the gravity, the value of g is positive. When it's going away from the gravity, the value of g is a negative. Okay. So now, our time is going to be, in this case, we are going to say that t will be equal to, we plug in the values, we are going to have to say it's going to be 2 times 200 is going to be a 400. A 400 divided by 9.8, then I get the square root. So this is giving me 6.3887, which is the same as, it's giving 6.38876 seconds. I can round it off, and then we can say that time is 3.4 seconds. So that's the answer for part one. Part two is saying calculate the horizontal distance traveled by the parcel before hitting the ground. They want us to find the range. As long as they're talking about uh, horizontal distance under projectile motion, that is the range. Now we do know that the range. Let's first put our time here: six point four seconds. The range is always given by the formula vx times t so the vx it is the velocity in x direction now the velocity in x direction is this one now which is 90 the time is the time it takes for the uh for the parcel to reach to the ground so that is the 4.6.4 seconds so we say that the range is going to be equal to our velocity is 90 times the time is 6.4 so our length is going to be, we have 90 times 6.4, which is going to be a 576, 576 meters. So that is the length. Okay.